Hello students. Welcome to the another session of the online teaching. In this session, we are going to start with the chapter number 7 that is getting to know plants. We all know that plants are so important for us. In chapter 1, we have studied that plants are the ultimate source of food to us. Plants also provide us with the oxygen to survive. So, it's very important for us to study and to know the plants. So, in this chapter, we are going to study the different varieties of plants and also the parts of plants. Before starting with the chapter, let us see what are the different topics that we are going to study in this chapter. First is introduction. Then we will study the difference between herbs, shrubs and trees. Then we will study the different parts of the plants like stem, leaf, root and flower. In our surroundings, we see many plants. Do all the plants look same? No. Some of the plants are small while some are big. Sometimes we can also see the patches of greens on the soil. Even we can notice the differences in the leaves of the plant based on their shape, size and color. Do all the plants have the same type of leaf? No. Some plants have a small leaf while some have the big one. Even the shape of the leaf varies from plant to plant. Mostly the plants have the green leaf. But there are some plants which have red color leaf. We see the variety of flowers. Based on the flowering habit, the plants are, con are divided into flowering and the non-flowering plant. What are flowering plant? The plant which bears flower are known as flowering plant. And the non-flowering plant are those plant which does not bear any flower. We can also see the differences in the size, color of the flowers. Some of the plants have a huge flowers, while some have the tiny ones. We can see the variety in the color of the flowers like red, blue, yellow, white, pink, etc. So, now let us study the different parts of any plant. What do any plant consist of? This will help us to understand the difference between the plants of the different kinds. What do a plant consist of? Any of the plant has root, stem, leaf, seeds and flowers. Now, let us start with herbs, shrubs and trees. These are the different kinds of plants. We will study how the herbs, shrubs and trees are different from one another. For this, we will perform an activity. We have to closely observe the size, stem and the branches of the plant. So first let's see how according to the size the plant varies. There are some of the plants which are smaller than you. There are the plants that are about your size and you have observed the plants which are taller than you. Now, according to the stem, how we can differentiate? 
we have to feel the stems and try to bend them gently what you will observe is some of the plants will have a tender stem or the heart what is tender some of the plants have a soft stem while some of the flowers might have the hard stem and according to the branches how we can differentiate we have to observe that from where do the branches of a plant grow do it grow close to the ground or higher up on the stem so based on the size stem and the branches we can differentiate the plant as herbs shrubs and trees let us see what are herbs the plant with green and the tender stem are called as a herbs the plant which have the tender or the soft stem and the color of the stem is green such plants are known as herbs herbs are usually short and they may or may not have branches so herbs may contain branches or they might not have the branches the example for the herbs are coriander or mint you might have seen the coriander you can observe that the stem is green and it is soft now let us see what are shrubs some plants develop branches near the base of the stem so in shrubs the branching starts near the base of the stem and in shrubs the stem is hard but it is not very thick such plants are known as shrubs so in stem the stem is hard but it is not thick what we have seen in the herbs that the stem was tender and green in color in herbs we can see some of the plants may have branches or some of the plants may not have branches but in shrubs the branches develop near the base of the stem what are the examples of shrubs rose plant tulsi plant you might have seen the rose or tulsi so the stem is hard but it is not very thick next is some plants are very tall and have the hard and the thick stem the plants that are tall and have hard and the thick stem and the branching in such plants is seen in the upper part of the stem that is much above the ground so such plants are called as trees in trees the branches is in the upper part of the stem in shrubs the branches were seen near the ground the example for the trees are coconut tree mango tree neem tree etc so how we can differentiate between herbs shrubs and trees in herbs the stem is so soft that is tender and green in color in shrubs the stem is thick in trees the stem is hard and thick in herbs the branching may be seen or may not be seen in shrubs the branching is seen from the lower in the lower side of the ground and in the trees the branching is seen in the upper part that is above the ground now apart from herbs shrubs and trees there are some more kinds of plant let's see there are some plant with a weak stem that cannot stand upright but spread on the ground such plants are called as a creepers so in some of the plants the stem is very weak due to the weak stem they cannot stand upright but they spread on the ground they tend to creep on the ground 
such plants are known as a creepers what are the example of the creepers cucumber watermelon pumpkin etc are some of the examples of the creepers next is climbers why those take those plants take support and climb up are called as a climbers so what do the climbers do they take the support and they try to climb such plants are known as a climbers you can see in the image how does the plant take the support of something and try to climb example of the climbers are grape vine money plant so the creepers creep on the ground while the climbers take the support and climb up now let us have a look on the table in the table some of the examples of the plants are given so based on their height stem and the branching pattern we have to categorize them as herbs shrubs or trees let's see which is the first plant here the first plant is a tomato plant the height of a tomato plant is short and the stem is green and tender no branching is seen in the tomato plant so in which category do it belong as the height of the tomato plant is short and the stem is green and tender so it is a herb next is mango plant we have seen the mango plant the height of a mango plant is much taller the stem of the mango plant is thick and hard and the branching is seen in the higher part of the stem that is much above the ground so the mango plant is a tree the third example is lemon the height of a mango lemon plant is neither tall nor short the stem is hard and the branching is seen at the base of the stem so a lemon plant is a shrub so you find some more examples and try to find out in which category do they belong let us study about the stem what is a stem stem bears leaf bud branches flowers and fruits what is the function of a stem what does the stem do stem helps in the upward movement of the water stem helps in the transportation of water from the roots to the different parts of the plants it help in the conduction of the minerals and the water to the leaf and the other plant parts attached to the stem to study that the stem conducts the water in the upward direction we will perform an activity so to perform this activity we will require a glass water red or a blue colored ink and a soft stem what we have to do is we have to pour the water to fill one third of the glass the glass should not be filled completely the one third of the part of the glass is to be filled with the water to the water we have to add a few drops of a red or a blue colored ink to this colored water we have to cut the base of the stem and put it in the glass observe the set setup you, what you you will observe the color 
will start appearing in the stem. If it is kept for a longer period, the color will appear in the veins of the leaf. Why does this happen? Why we can see the color in the veins of the leaf? Because the stem conducts water in the upward direction. So, in the water, as the ink was present along with the water, the ink also moves in the upward direction. So, we see that the stem helps in the upward movement of the water. The water and the minerals go to the leaf and the other plant parts attached to the stem. As we see that the ink along with the water moves in the upward direction of the stem. Similarly, the minerals that are present in the soil and the water will move in the upward direction to the stem and they are reached to the other part of the plants. Hence, stem helps in the transportation of water and minerals to the different parts of the plant. So, what we have studied in the today's session? First, we have seen that the plants appear different in our surrounding. Based on this, we have differentiated the plants as herbs, shrubs and trees. We have seen what are herbs, shrubs and what are trees. We have also studied about the creepers and the climbers. And at the last, we have studied the function of the stem. What does the stem do? I hope all the topics that we have studied today are understood to you. We will continue further in our next session.